Welcome back everybody to me doing something I usually don't do and that is that weird mid-year book tag because it's almost the end of June and today's my birthday and I've reached those 800 subscribers so yay um, I'm kind of happy and thankful for all of you who did that for me so um, yeah. Thank you very, very, very much for your patience, for your forbearance, and all these other things that are necessary to stay with me. <clears throat> and without further ado, let's try to do this weird book tag thing. Why, uh, cheers. <sighs> so yeah, I, I mean, y'all know that I don't do tags usually, because I'm, you know, I don't get tagged and... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not that kind of person, apparently. Um, and I tried to find the questions for that book tag, and they seem to differ depending which booktuber does that thing. So I took those from both the Library of Alexandria and Joanna and combined them. And we'll see if I remember all of them, because I'm obviously doing this... Um, improvised and have no notes, so if I forget a question... That's the problem. I think I'll be at like 13B questions. <laughs> we will see. And there's two I won't be able to answer. So we'll just go through this. Uh, according to that Goodreads um, reading challenge, which I started this year, because I don't know. Yeah, I have Goodreads. I don't use it. It's um, another one of those things where I'm <laughs> terribly bad at. <laughs> um, but apparently I read 64 books so far this year, which sounds like a lot, um, but there's a lot of cheating in there, right? There's um, five, um, I mean, most of those are rereads, and there's five novels, um, Chronicles of Amber novels in there. And those are like 150 to 180 pages, right? I can read one of those in, in a day. It's not a big deal. So it, it sounds bigger than it is, I feel. <clears throat> anyway, I read 64 books. Most of those were rereads. There were maybe a handful of new books that I read this year, which is probably something we need to reflect on at the end of all of this. Um, but yeah, I guess um, we'll see if I can manage to do this without dropping all kinds of rereads in there. We will see. There's a tough couple of questions there where we will see. So yeah, what's the best book? That's number one. Best book I've read so far. And if we go with new reads, I have like one that I definitely want to mention, and that is Hollow by Brian Catling. It came out last year, and y'all should go and read it. It's absolutely mindfuck. And it's an absolute mindfuck, and I love it for that. It's, you know... It's, it was easier for me to process than Brian Catling's Vore, and it's certainly, it's trippy as hell, so you should definitely go and read it. It's, it's, it's well worth it. Trust me <laughs> on that one. So that's definitely one of my favorite books of the year so far, if not the best. The other one, I'll just mention it as well, is because it'll come up later. Is definitely a version by Alistair Reynolds, which I absolutely loved, and uh, there's a video for those who want to look at it, it's full of spoilers after the quick introduction, so only watch that if you have read it, because those spoilers are very important for the story. So, um, we will see. So I guess those are like the best books, if we're looking at the best new books I read this year. <laughs> and uh, yes, that's, um, yeah. Not much, I think. And now we come to the tough one, that is the best sequel I read this year. Now, that's that's tough, because like if we're looking at books I have read for the first time this year, the only books that have sequels that I've read this year for the first time are, well, everything of <laughs> the, on the Wheel of Time, and I am very hesitant to call any one of those um, best sequel of the year. <laughs> Unfortunately, the other sequel I read was uh, The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynne, and while it's better than The Shadow of the Gods, at least for me, I also hesitate to call this the best sequel I read this year. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I have a problem there, right? <laughs> now, obviously, I read a ton of, like, reread a ton of series. I read, you know, the first three uh, Black Company novels again, and those are fantastic sequels. I read um, the uh, Land Fit for Heroes trilogy again, and both The Dark Defiles and especially The Cold Commands are fantastic sequels. I read a shit ton of Discworld and those are beyond reproof, so I'm kind of 
stumped what to say, I guess. If we're looking at just new books that I read this year, it would have to be The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynne, because, yeah, Wheel of Time is worse. Now we're coming to number three. See, I'm trying to remember those uh, questions. I hope I won't miss any. Number three is, what's a new book that you haven't read yet? And um, yeah, that's Future Artifacts by Cameron Hurley. It's a short story collection about future, like military sci-fi short stories, as far as I know. It came out in May and I just haven't gotten around to reading it yet. But it is, you know, everything that Cameron Hurley publishes will end up on my like um, non-existing TBR as soon as I have like an audible credit to get it or time to slip it in, which is hopefully in the next couple of, you know, I guess, whenever I have new audible credits, which will be at the end of the month of July, I guess, <laughs> then certainly future artifacts will happen because it is absolutely high, top priority for me right now. Uh, number four um, is... What book am I looking for the most in the second half of the year? Well, <clears throat> there's a, certainly a problem there, which is, once again, I have no idea what comes out next in the next half year, because I've, I've avoided a lot of the general booktube or book chatter about new releases for, I don't know, weird reasons, I guess. And the only one that I'm definitely interested in is Babel by R.F. Kuang. I have not read the Poppy War, and I'm not even sure if I want to read the Poppy War series, but the whole idea of this being um, about translation and linguistics as a form of imperialist power to to build power under, in colonialism sounds like something that I really want to read. It, it, it literally sounds like that from the theme. It's, it's something I'm interested in with the whole Orientalism thing and what, whatnot. I, yeah, I, I got to read this book. It's very, it's very simple. And, you know, the, the, it also says it's, um, you know, a tonal response uh, to uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, which I did enjoy. And if you manage to keep that same level or a similar level of authentic um, 19th century prose going, then I'm, I'm, I'm very much into that, and I will certainly read this as soon as it comes out, which I think is sometime in August, at least for um, people of my region-locked um, part of the world, according to Audible. So yeah, that's, that's definitely something that I'm very much looking forward to. There's a new N.K. Jameson part uh, book coming out, which is part two of the The City We Became series. I haven't read City We Became yet, so um, um, the the world we do something or other with, I mean, it's in December or November, so I guess I have time to read the other one before that, so that's something I'm low-key looking forward to. I'm, I'm, I'm still hoping, holding out hope that Lavi Tidar will actually publish um, his um, next part of the Anti-Matter of Britain series, because he's a very fast writer, but I don't know anything about that, and I haven't checked anything, so that's not an official one. So yes, Babel by R.F. Kuang is the one that I am very much looking forward to, because this sounds like right up my alley in so many ways. Um, so yeah, that's, um, <laughs> that's that part. All right. Now let's look at the next two questions, which are sort of a pair. One of them is the biggest surprise, and the other one is the biggest disappointment, which I think is question number five. So let's go this way around. And the biggest disappointment, by a long shot, was definitely the Wheel of Bloody Time. Like, I, I, I had read The Eye of the World back in the day, and then stopped for all kinds of reasons. I should have listened to myself. I blasted through the entire mess because I already, in a huge lapse of judgment and uh, <laughs> boast of an enthusiasm, I spent all those audible credits for the entire series, so I, yeah. And what can I tell you? It sucks. It's, it's really bad. It's not a good fantasy series by any stretch of the means, by any means. It, it is just really bad. It's badly written, badly edited, full of terrible elements. It sucks. It's a huge disappointment, and the fact that it's still so popular... Well, I mean, 
I already didn't have much faith in humanity, but oh boy, y'all have something to answer for. Oh, my, not you people watching this probably, but oh god. Definitely the biggest disappointment of the year and it'll be very, very hard to actually be more disappointing than this. I'll just say it that way. It's, 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 it's really shit and not even, you know... No, I mean, The Hunger of the Gods wasn't that much of a disappointment because I already knew that it would be hard for me to really love it. And uh... So, in fact, it was almost... I was almost happy to see that it wasn't that bad. But yeah, The Wheel of Time, all of them. If I have to pick one book, I'll probably go either with The Fires of Heaven just because of that whole rape apology dialogue in the first or second chapter or with Lord of Chaos because... Oh boy, those two are probably the worst parts of the series, but the overall thing is just... No, we should just like do away with that crap and read good books instead. <clears throat> Alright, um, biggest surprise. I don't know, I'm not sure if I... Sh oh, no, wait, I know what I picked for that one. And the biggest surprise for me was The Master and Margarita by Michael Bulgakov which I hadn't read before and found thoroughly enjoyable in so many ways. I, I like the humor, I like the brutal criticism of Stalinist Russia, I like the absurdist elements. I love the cat, <laughs> which is interesting because I'm normally more of a dog person than a cat person, but BMF, I'm right on there, man. That, that cat beats any band with that name from nowadays, hands down. Cool cat. So yeah, The Master and Margarita by Bulgakov is probably my surprise of the year because I wasn't expecting anything at all. And I was blown away by it. It was fun. I enjoyed it. So yeah, there's that. And no, I didn't make a video about it. I, <laughs> I don't know if I should, but fantastic book. And if you haven't read it yet, go out, read some classics. Why not some cl Russian classics? Why not some Russian classics that are not completely depressing? All in one go, plus talking cats. And I know this is the internet, so you better love that. So yeah, that's, I guess, my biggest surprise. Um, which, yeah, nice one, right? My new favorite author. Now, this is, once again, really hard. Because when we look at it, I read two books by authors that I hadn't read before. Literally. Because, <laughs> yes, I read, you know, Eye of the World before, so Robert Jordan doesn't count. Also, he's definitely gonna turn, not going to turn into my new favorite author. Uh, and I um, read, well, Hollow and Brian Catling. I had read the Vore trilogy before, so that doesn't count. That's two. There's literally two authors that I hadn't read before, and those are when we're talking outside of, well, Bulgakov. And... Now, what I'm reading right now, will be finishing by tomorrow, which is Finnegan's Wake by um, James Joyce. But neither Bulgakov nor Joyce will count, because... no. No. <laughs> so, with the other ones, there's two. That one is John M. Ford, with The Dragon Waiting. And the other one is Matt Ruff, where I read um, Lovecraft Country. And I gotta go with Matt Ruff. I did really love Lovecraft Country. I just saw that he's doing a sequel to it, which is scheduled for 2023, so doesn't count under, under things I'm looking forward to in the second half of the year. But yeah, Matt Ruff with the Lovecraft Country book, that that is something that I really liked, and I'm certainly going to see if I can find some other of some others of his books and uh, give them a chance because there's a lot of talent there. Um, so yeah, that I guess is my newest favorite author. I guess. All right, what else did I? <laughs> That's like seven questions down. Question number eight is the first one that I only found in Alan's list and that I am not going to answer. And that is my newest favorite, my newest fictional crush. And I don't have crushes. I have no room for love in my soul. You know that, right? No, the point is that, uh, no, I don't have any fictional crushes. Um, when we're looking at especially female characters, I mean, looking at the fact that I've mostly read Wheel of Time, 
<laughs> Even if I tried, it would be very, very hard to find anyone. <laughs> I know it's like a very popular thing in Wheel of Time fandom to, at least male Wheel of Time fandom, to go like, oh, which one of Rand's would you pick? And I'm like, none of them. Min was cool before the patriarchy got her down. I don't know. So, no fictional crushes for me. Um, but we are coming to the almost same one, and easier to answer question for me, and that is the question, what is your favorite new fictional character? And that has to be Dr. Silas Code from A Version by Alistair Reynolds. That character is fantastic in so many ways, and I'm not going to give too much away here, but the way Silas Code struggles with what it means to be human, what, what humanity is, is fantastic. I loved it. It's, it's, it's insanely cool, and it's definitely, from the new books I read this year, definitely my favorite character. Well-rounded in ways I wasn't expecting. Also, going directions I wasn't expecting. And that is pretty cool. All right, so what else? Um, which book made me cry? See, we're coming back to the same kind of things, and that book that definitely made me cry a lot at the end was A Version by Alistair Reynolds, which is why I was hesitant to put it up there as best novel, because, you know, <laughs> it feels kind of bad when I'm giving the same answer over and over again, but yeah. No, Aversion made me cry a lot at the end, because it's it's so fucking tragic. And once again, you should all go and read that book. It's fantastic. It does so many things so right. And it it certainly made me cry a lot. Yeah, um, we're coming close to the end, I feel, with these questions. Another one is, which book made me happy? Now, that's that's kind of hard with the new books, because... You look at the books that I've read this year that are new, and that didn't absolutely enrage me like Wheel of Time. Those are not happy books. Hollow by Brian Catling. I'd be disturbed if I'd say it would it made me happy. That would really, I don't know, raise questions, I guess. <laughs> um, like, all of those kind of made me, are, are very, like, pretty dark stuff. It makes me wonder what's wrong with me, right? <laughs> but um, I guess uh, Hollow did make me happy in the way it, it does absurd stuff. That's certainly something I could probably go with um, Lovecraft Country again, because the way Matt Ruff manages to weave in all these different genres or styles of pulp literature, which I absolutely love, is is something that made me happy in a more literary sense. I mean, that's like, I guess, another part that I'm rarely getting very emotionally entangled with books. I'm a very, um, I don't want to say analytical reader, but I'm, yeah, I rarely get involved emotionally. <laughs> so I guess I could maybe go with um, Lovecraft Country on a... On the non-fiction side, probably China Mieville's A Spectre Haunting made me happy because I, I love it when like people like China Mieville with a fiction background come out and do like straight up um, introductions to the Communist Manifesto. That's something that I can really get behind and that's that's great. So yeah, there we go. Either, either it's uh, Lovecraft Country or it is um, A Spectre Haunting. <laughs> <laughs> now that says a lot about me, right? Well, if books about the Communist Manifesto make me happy, I don't know. It's kind of creepy, <laughs> in a way. But uh, there we are. What, what can you do? I'm that kind of guy. Um, now we're coming to the question that I can't answer. And my question is, what's the most beautiful book you bought this year? Or got given? Well, I didn't buy any physical books, so I can't tell you about that. And I didn't get given any books, so I can't tell you anything about that either. Well, that's not right. Um, uh, I got one Audible book given as a present, and I'm very, very happy for that. And that is um, um, one of the books of The Short Sun. So thank you for that gift. <laughs> I can't say if it's beautiful, though, because I haven't read it yet. 
Uh, but there we are. <laughs> no answer there because I don't get book presents. <laughs> And uh, while I still have some outstanding uh, tabletop RPG um, books, um, they didn't arrive this year, so can't say anything about that either. Um, next question, right? And uh, that question is, what was your favorite video or post you made? And I think I have to go with the Orientalism video. Because I'm, I'm really proud of that one, because it's outside my comfort zone. I feel like I did a decent job of tackling an important and complicated subject that I am not the most qualified person to tackle, but since no one does it, I, you know, I'm kind of proud that I actually went and did it and uploaded it, so I have to go with that one as the favorite thing I did, I did this year. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> And I guess that leaves the final question, unless I have um, forgotten one, which is completely possible. <clears throat> and that is, which books do you have to read until the end of the year? Now, I, I don't have to read anything, right? That's, that's, like, I don't have to read anything. But what I want to read very much is the Demon Prince series by Jack Vance, which I'll do next month, when the final one is available on Audible, which will be sometime in July. And that's definitely, I've got them all on pre-order, that's something I have to read, I'm so looking forward to it, because Jack Vance is Jack Vance is Jack Vance. And, yeah. What else do I have to read? I mean, the um, Latro trilogy by Gene Wolfe, which finally was available in audible in audio this year yeah i got to read that same goes for the book of the short and the long sun because those two were finally available in audio and yeah what i really want to read or reread in parts is elric but i can't because region lock and at some point i'll have to talk about how region lock is fucking me over and how it's pissing me off to no end that i can get the first part of that new elric trilogy on audible and i can't get the second one and i can't get the third one either i guess so um yeah fuck that um i guess i won't read elric <laughs> i mean i've read part of elric and uh, so forth but no stormbringer for me i guess we will see. That's, I think, all of the questions. So, yeah. 64 books and maybe 10 of them were new? I should probably look into new books again at some point and uh, maybe I'll, I'll find something. Maybe I should do that. And now I just remember that when we're talking about sequels and stuff, I also forgot uh, that I read Mark Lawrence's Broken Empire and Nah, it doesn't qualify for anything of the sorts. Maybe it was the best sequel in that, well, King of Thorns is not as terrible as anything in Wheel of Time. And, well, at least the prose is better as uh, than, uh, <laughs> what's it called, um, Hunger of the Gods. So there you go. But that's, that's all, really. No. Um, so yeah, I should probably try some more new authors and do... Go out there and be part of the booktube herd, but I, I just, I don't know. I'll just dig around in those weird classics and look at and get annoyed by all the toxic masculinity and all the orientalism and all the racism and all the sexism and all that stuff instead of just reading new books that are actually good. I don't know. I guess I like to punish myself, which is why I will just finish this by now and go back to reading Finnegan's Wake because, oh boy... Is that fucking with my brain? <clears throat> anyway, once again, thank you all for those 800 subscribers. And thank you all for sticking with me. Thank you all for watching this. Um, let me know what your favorites of the year were so far. And um, all of that stuff. And uh, I don't know. I'll see you in like another video real soon. I did just reread The Death of the Author by Roland Barthes yesterday. I actually reread it twice yesterday because it's short. <laughs> so there might be something coming <laughs> anyway have a great day and i'll see you around cheers